Okay, so for our next one, what if we have f of x is equal to negative 2x minus 1? How do we take the derivative of this guy? Well, notice that we have two terms, and they're basically added together. Even though there's a negative sign here, this could be negative 1. So you could say these are both summed together. So we know we're going to take the derivative of each part separately. So the derivative of the first part, we have to do a little bit of thinking about here. So let's go f prime of x. What do we have? Negative 2x. So if we go over here, this is a constant times a function. The function being x, the constant being the negative 2 out in front. So the way we handle it is just like it says here. We just take the constant out in front, and then we take the derivative of the function. So really, in practice, when you have negative 2x, the negative 2 is sitting out in front. It just stays out in front. Now we have to take the derivative of x which we did just a minute ago. So it's really x to the first power. So a 1 comes down because of the first power, x, and then for the new exponent, it's 1 minus 1, right? Because we just take 1 off the exponent. So that really and truly takes care of this first term. The negative 2 stays out in front. The derivative of this is 1 times x to the 1 minus 1, OK? Now what about this guy over here? What's the derivative of negative 1? Well, negative 1 is a constant. The derivative of any constant is always 0. So over here, we always have a 0. So what we have here is two functions summed together. The first one is the negative 2x. The second one is the negative 1. The derivative of the first one we wrote down over there, the derivative of the second one is just a constant, so it's 0. So I'm writing 0 here so you know what I'm doing, but really after you do enough derivatives, you'll know that the derivative of that constant just disappears and it, and it doesn't even play. So finally, the answer that we would write would be this guy, negative 2, and then we have x to the 0 power, which is just 1. So the answer is just simply going to be uh, negative 2. So uh, when you think about it, though, you know, I'll take a little chance to show you on the side. What is this a graph of? If you plot this, negative 2x plus 1, this is just a line, right? You have a slope here, right? and you have you know, some y-intercept there we could draw and plot. But the point is it's a straight line with a slope of what? What should be the slope of this line? If this were just y equals some line, you plot it, what should the slope be? It's negative 2 because that slope is always in front of the variable. So the slope of this line never changes because it goes on and on forever with a slope negative 2. Look at what we calculated for our derivative. It's a constant, negative 2, always. No matter where I'm at looking at on this uh, coordinate plane, no matter where I look, the slope of the original function is always negative 2, which makes total sense for a line because the slope of a line never ever changes. Unlike that parabola, the slope of that parabola does change all the time. So you can kind of do a little bit of a sanity check to make sure that you're getting something that kind of makes sense. Okay, let's go and work another one. Let's say that we have f of x is equal to 1 minus x squared. 1 minus x squared. So again, we have two functions, and they're basically summed together. The fact that this is negative doesn't really matter, because you could say 1 plus negative x squared. But they're summed together. So just like we look at our guy here, we take the derivative of the first part, we take the derivative of the second part, and we basically add them together. But the first part we have is just a constant, so the derivative of that is 0. What is the derivative of this? this part here. So we take the exponent, move it down, so we have a minus 2. You have to keep the minus sign because you have a minus sign here. 2 comes down, x goes there, 